Welcome to the Southpaw Sessions. I'm Joe Levy, a contributing editor at Rolling Stone and also a contributor to magazines like Details, where I wrote this month's Jake Gyllenhaal cover story. The occasion was Southpaw. These gentlemen need no introduction. Jake Gyllenhaal, Eminem, executive producer of the Southpaw soundtrack and Jake, star of the movie. Let's talk about where this movie started. Kurt Sutter, the creator of Sons of Anarchy, wrote the script originally for you with your life story in mind. And tell me, how'd that script first come to you? The original idea was for me to be in the movie. You know, something that would, would, would be similar to my life story, but I don't know, maybe metaphorically through boxing, you know, coming up or something, you know. And the script had been in development for quite some time and Kurt Sutter got on board. And once we got the script, you know, it was incredible. But and this had, was in 2010? Yeah, it had been in, in the works for a while. And, and by the time the script had got to a place where everybody felt comfortable with it, the timing really just wasn't right for me to, to be able to, to do it and to be able to make that, that commitment. And the, the story of the movie is the story of Billy Hope, who Jake eventually came on board and portrayed, uh, a southpaw boxer, uh, developed with you in mind. You're a lefty, as you say, and phenomenal. You write with the left. Uh, and he loses everything. And, and what about that? He loses his family, he loses his, his title. What about that resonated with you? I mean, I, just, I, I love stories like that, you know, comeback stories. That's one of the reasons that it, it, it appealed to me, you know, in the, in the first place, was just the idea of it. Um, you know, and based off just, just, just me not being able, the fact that I wasn't able to do it, I just felt like this script is so good. Like, I wanna be involved. If I can't be involved in the movie, I want something to do with it, you know. If I can pr produce music for the soundtrack or whatever happens, I just feel like I want to be involved. And seeing the movie and how Jake did it, it's just, it's incredible. So I'm super excited just to be a part of it, you know. And what a job that everybody did. Antoine, the way he did it and, and put it together. And everybody who, Forrest, everybody who's in this movie is killing their roles. So. And Antoine is Antoine Fuqua, the director. Jake, mm -hmm. tell me how you first came to meet with Antoine about this project. Uh, I had met with Antoine like five years before and we had like a lunch meeting. It was very Hollywood. And uh, he told me he saw something in me that no one had seen before. And I was like, oh, gee, okay. And I thought it was kind of bullshit, to be honest. And then a year, maybe four years later, we had another meeting about this. And he said, I told you five years ago, I saw something in you that, and I want to bring it out of you. And, and, you know, and I was like, oh, that's funny. I thought maybe that was, that was bull <laughs> And he was like, no, no, this is for real. And uh, I read the script and I thought it was amazing. And I thought the idea of this father-daughter story, which is essentially the thing that really drew me to it, um, you know, was so moving. And Antoine said to me, you know, I want to shoot these fight sequences like real fights. I want there to be HBO cameramen there filming it. I want Roy Jones Jr. and Jim Lampley there. I want Tony Weeks there as a ref. I want the whole thing to feel real. So uh, do you know how to box? And I was like, um, no, but I can learn, right. <laughs> you know? And, and, and so, I, so I, you know, he's like, all right, well, then you have to commit. And I said, I'm, I'm in. And this was after you had filmed Nightcrawler, so not only do you have to learn how to box, but you had lost quite a bit of weight for that role, so you had, yeah. to, you had to literally rebuild your body. Well, I met Antoine well, right before I started shooting Nightcrawler, and I was like, you know, 35 pounds lighter. And <laughs> I remember being like, oh no, I can play this boxer, you know, I remember thinking that, and just thinking like, how is he ever gonna believe that I could play a boxer when I'm just like sitting here all skinny, but. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, I just needed a running start. I just needed to ramp up, and I knew if I had a long enough running start, I'd, I'd be able to make it. Now, uh, you trained for five months. Uh, M, you had taken up boxing as exercise and training at one point, so you already, when the script came to you, had some boxing experience, is that right? Yeah, I had did that. I messed around with it for a couple of years with um, Emmanuel Stewart and Hill McKenzie. And just, uh, you know, we, they would just come to my house and we would, we would uh, hit the pads, have sparring sessions. Sometimes Emmanuel would bring um, some guys from his, from Crunk Gym and, and got my ass whipped a couple of times. A couple of times did pretty good, you know, but uh, it was all, it was all just, you know, it was all for fun and 
exercise, recreation kind of thing. Um, have you guys compared uh, training notes and sparring notes at all? Not really Not yet. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into it. <laughs> That's what this interview is going to be about. Uh, no, I, I mean, the funny thing is, is uh, I sort of took a, I took a little bit of time, like after we finished shooting the movie, and took a break. It was such hard training, you know, getting ready for it that, you know, you kind of wear yourself out. You, you understand. You trained a for bit. five months. You were doing two days, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so you were running in the morning, training, mm -hmm. breathing and eating, and then training again. <laughs> well, breathing was a part of all of that. How long had you been training before you first had a sparring session? Uh, out to maybe two months, because I mean, I was learning the basics. I mean, I, I really didn't know how to, like, I didn't know how to do anything. I mean, I thought I knew how to throw a punch, but I really had no idea. That's the um, exact same. Yeah. It's in Win Emanuel first was, was teaching me like stances and things like that and the correct, the proper way to throw a punch, you know, just regular fighting is so different. different. It's way different. Uh, regular fighting, you mean uh, punching people on the street? I mean, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference between, yeah, like in it surviving and then yeah, street the brawl. Yeah, street yeah. brawl. Yeah. <laughs> what were your training sessions like? How long did they last? Probably about an hour each time, hour, hour and a half maybe. And the sparring, you said, did good a couple of times, got your ass kicked a couple of yeah, times? Yeah, I went for about two months, the same, before yeah. Emmanuel actually got me to, to spar with somebody. He had a couple of boxes that were really good, and one of them was, was, was actually was a contender or whatever. And uh, he wouldn't tell me until, <laughs> he wouldn't tell me until, you know, we were done. Because I don't think he wanted to, it would have really fucked <laughs> me mentally, you know. But, um... Nah, we would just we would just spar, and, and, and I remember, you know, the first time I ever sparred, I ended up getting my gear <laughs> was like on the other side of my my head, you know. I'm glad that it, my neck didn't wasn't still. You just fought a pro, right? Right. <laughs> Jake, what was it like for you for sparring? Um, we started body sparring first, so maybe Emmanuel should have tried that first. Yeah, that probably would have been cool. Yeah, but that was that was how we started. We just started all body sparring, so <clears throat> we were only really allowed to hit, you know, body, you know, which actually is really is really difficult, you know, to just basically only focus on that, and then also really really hurts a lot. Um, um, there, there were times I think you probably prefer getting knocked out than getting hit in the, with a body shot, mm -hmm. and then we progressed as we got closer. We stopped really sparring a lot six weeks out because we shot, uh, we shot all the fights the first two and a half weeks. So we started training and trying to get down to weight because I had I was at like 190 or something and it was a light heavyweight. So I was trying to get to 175. So we really were focusing on that and just getting down the choreography because the choreography is just it's a whole other thing. It's not a it's not a real fight all the time. It's like you have to remember all these moves. It's like dancing or something. You know, you're like, oh, left hand, right hand. Oh, I'm slipping that, and then I'm yeah. over here. Remembering the angles to the to the to the ring and where you're supposed to be and all that. So we spent a lot of time doing choreography the six six weeks out. You said Antoine wanted to shoot those fight scenes as though they were real fights, mm -hmm. but those shooting days last longer than a real fight. Yes, I mean we're shooting for 12 hour days, 12, 14 hour days, and then we shoot nonstop, we have an hour lunch, but throughout all of it, we just, we shoot, we shoot, you know, they, a roll for a camera can last about 20 minutes. So we, he would just shoot for 20 minutes, you know, and we would just do the round of choreography, then we would, the bell would ring after three minutes, we'd go in, we'd do corner work and a scene in the corner. The HBO guys would f film the scene in the corner, and then the bell would ring again, and we'd go back out and we'd do round two, and then, choreography and then we come back when the bell would ring we come back and we do the scene again and then we start to improv over the day we would take things that really worked in the scene and stuff in combinations things we felt more comfortable getting closer with and we would just run those over and over again we talk I'm gonna throw two two jabs left hand right hook okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna get hit by the first one then I'm gonna slip the right hand you know and then I'm gonna move and, and uh, you guys were making them up yeah yeah oh, we that's crazy yeah yeah and a lot of times you get hit by mistake. Like sometimes I'd be talking. Oh wait, wait, what'd you? Sp you know, did start. <laughs> you right. know, you'd be like, yeah. okay, left handed. Whoa, oh, bam. Oh, right, we're in it. You know, and that's when your jaw would get your. My jaw got messed up because I was always talking <laughs> while I was getting punched. For real. <laughs> <laughs>